Can you smell it? It smells like new consoles. Yes, we already did a before you buy on the Xbox Series X, evaluating that. Like I said, we cover everything here. So now we're doing the PlayStation 5. We were lucky enough to get our hands on one. Hopefully you guys out there did too with all the uh, pre-order nightmare chaos. But we have a lot to say. I'm gonna preface this the same way I preface the Xbox Series X review, and that is gaming is so big now, there are so many different types of players. I think there's a console or a PC or a device that caters to every single person. So the PS5 itself has some very specific, interesting things that might appeal to you. It feels very different than a Series X. It feels very different than anything else out there. So we wanna dive right in. We got gameplay, we got info, we got hands-on stuff. So let's just go. First thing, the way we start, just like with the Xbox, like let's talk about the design design of the hardware itself. I personally was pretty skeptical, but the PlayStation 5, it looks way better in person. It's got a strong presence, man. It's like a very clean black and white with strong lines. The lighting is just enough and it just looks cool. You know, is it a bit obnoxious or flashy? Maybe to some. Is it a bit cheesy? Depends who you ask. It's just sleek and bold and weird. Sort of like a futuristic car. It's also a massive boy. <laughs> Here are some dimensions if you need to measure near your TV. But we really like the attention to details like the PlayStation logo cutout and the microscopic controller button logos making up some of the texture on the console itself. It just makes the thing feel really premium. From far away, it might look like a toy, but up close, the PS5 looks really, really nice. Nice. While the Xbox Series X kind of is low key and designed to just disappear into your living room, the PlayStation 5 is like the complete opposite. Now on the practical side, the console does come with a stand that can easily be installed for a vertical or horizontal stance. It's conveniently designed to store the extra little screw and it shifts nicely to the side, even though I gotta say the stand itself does feel like cheap plastic. Now just two small nitpicks about the console, and this is just personal preference, of course, not the biggest deal, but number one, the glossy black is a fingerprint magnet and really a dust magnet, even after like a day of use. And number two, the stand in the horizontal position just doesn't feel great. It seems unreliable. I honestly don't really trust it. Very happy to have a stand included in the box and not have to pay extra for it, but it could be better. Now let's talk about the DualSense controller. This is the biggest redesign the DualShock controller has seen pretty much in forever. First, the general design, the controller is definitely a bit hardier. You know, it's weightier and just larger in the hand. Generally, the controller feels really nice and expensive. The buttons to the left and right of the touchpad for like start and share have a, like a way nicer press to them now. And the triangle, square, circle, X buttons look a bit different, but feel pretty much the same, which is a good thing. Uh, there's still a little speaker and there's a built-in microphone too, although we haven't used this too much and see ourselves honestly not using it and opting for something else. But it's there in a pinch and I guess now you can't lie to people that you have no mic. Now the subjective thing that will come down to your personal preference though is the actual feel in the hand. I found it to feel a bit bulkier in spots and not in a way that I wanted. It feels needlessly larger than a DualShock 4 in a way that I, I think dis detracts from the ergonomics. But again, that's my personal opinion. It might change over time. I might get more used to the controller or maybe you'll like it right away. I don't know. Don't get it twisted though. This controller is still great, especially when you talk about the features. First of all, vibration is improved. It's now focused way more around haptic feedback style features. There's a lot of subtleties and differences to the vibrations and if you if you've ever played a Nintendo Switch and experienced HD rumble, it's kinda like that. But the biggest thing is the adaptive triggers. These were hyped up pre-release and in early reviews, and I now believe after using them that they're like totally worth the hype. Essentially, like for different games, the triggers can replicate a resistance, meaning different games can have the triggers feel and pull differently for different situations. So like, think maybe you're playing like a first person shooter, like Call of Duty Cold War, aiming down the sights with a rocket launcher will feel like a bigger pull of the trigger than just pulling it to aim a pistol. And then with the other trigger, you will feel the gun firing. The triggers will feel differently depending on the game and like the scenario. Sometimes it's easy to pull the trigger. Sometimes it's harder to pull the trigger and they always feel different. And so far it's been really cool. Play Astro's Playroom. It's like the free game you get with PlayStation 5. And I thought it was going to be like a dumb little tech demo, but man, it is really fun 
a nostalgic platformer, not super long, but it really does demonstrate the DualSense capabilities very well. Seriously, take the time to play it, you might be surprised. Now the biggest concern with those fancy controller features is battery life, of course, but so far we haven't seen cause for concern. Astro definitely drains it the fastest, but normal gaming sessions have outperformed the life of the previous DualShock already, and this is even just first impressions. The biggest question is, you know, how many developers are going to take advantage of these triggers and features long term? It has to be programmed on the game side. The developers have to choose to implement all these cool controller features. So yes, first party exclusive Sony made games like the next God of War will definitely use these features, but will some other random game? We have to wait and see. I still remember, I never forget, I loved the touchpad when the PlayStation 4 controller first launched and it just was never utilized enough and never lived up to the true potential. Now the actual things you're playing on it, real quick. I'm focusing on the hardware, but like with the Xbox, I still wanna take a moment to talk about the games, cause that's important. I think PlayStation does have a leg up here thanks to some exciting launch games. Miles Morales is just awesome, straight up. Love me some Spider-Man games, love playing the PS4 remastered one here. Uh, they added the puddles back in so the gamers have one. Yes, technically you can get Miles Morales on PS4, but still. Uh, Demon Souls is also incredible. It's the game you expect, but it looks insane. Bug Snacks is also a thing, although we haven't tried that one yet. Uh, playing older games on it seems to work fine with what we've tried, although we've seen a few examples of minor issues on social media, but we did it with Ghost of Tsushima, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, The Last of Us Part Two, and it was good. So with some exciting new stuff and maybe some stuff to catch up on that might look a little better now, there is enough to keep you busy game-wise. Although I gotta say, man, like new generation game prices that Sony is charging, is kind of rough. I paid 75 US dollars after tax for Demon's Souls, and that, that stings. It's not just Sony that's doing it, to be clear, it's other publishers, but yeah, just saying. Now next, the interface and the general setup. This is the stuff that really makes it feel like a new, fresh console experience. Although I gotta admit, it's gonna take some time to get used to, and I don't know how much I love it over the previous generation's interface, still. The screen is simpler now, icons are more up top now, still your games are linearly arranged, and then you can access your library towards the end, it's super clean and simple, but I wish there were a few more options for customizing and organizing. Oh, and it, there's a separate tab that keeps your media apps like Hulu and Netflix and YouTube and stuff. This and the PlayStation button takes some getting used to, but then once you get into settings, like the regular settings type screens, that's pretty straightforward and what you're used to with PlayStation 4. The share features are also nicely cleaned up and easier to take advantage of. I found myself taking screenshots and organizing and putting them uh, way more than on PlayStation 4 right away, just because the reworked interface just makes things a bit nicer. But again, that's just my experience. Now, like I mentioned, hitting that PlayStation button on your controller kind of works and feels much differently than you're used to. You know, the first thing that pops up when you hit it is the card system. A bunch of tiles that show info like a trophy you're working towards, in-game progress, and hints. Scroll down below that and then you can access what you're really probably looking for. The option to go home, to close out the game, access your accessories, or you know maybe put the console in rest mode, that stuff. So the card system, a lot of the stuff like the hints and the picture-in-picture -picture video stuff has to be implemented by developers. They have to choose to use these features to their full extent, but I think it has the potential for them to add more features. I personally don't see myself using it as much as it stands, but I think it can become more interesting over time. Maybe I'll get used to it. Still, it's pretty slick at least. The whole interface is pretty nice. I did have one hard hang up crash with the whole thing, but otherwise it's lickety split. And most importantly, the PlayStation Store now loads up like a normal store you'd want to access. It is no longer a pain in the ass, and I love it. Load times are also awesome. The SSD tech they have going on here is awesome. Like, and for some games, loading is barely a thing. We've covered this in other videos. We've talked about this a lot, but oh, this stuff makes all the difference, and this stuff makes it feel really next gen, and will probably only get better and lead to more innovations down the line. As for storage, you know, games are getting bigger and bigger, and the PS5 storage size is well under one terabyte, so keep it in mind. Storage solutions seem to still be in the works with Sony right now. Apparently, you can only use an external drive to store PS4 games using hard drives in other ways, and SSD expansion aren't supported at launch, but I expect that to come pretty soon, because that's like standard stuff. Otherwise though, like this is an exciting new machine. It feels fresh and new. It's clearly very powerful. You know, we've had good HDR, high frame rates, 
All this stuff is great. It's worth experiencing. And it's even better if you have a good modern TV. I've been saying this in all of our next-gen videos. Sometimes it's hard to see how big of a jump there is in YouTube videos. You gotta see this in action on a good screen. The PS5 is just slick. It's very fast. It seems to run very cool, and the one we have here has been running very quietly. Really, without the risk of sounding like a fanboy or anything, like it does feel like an exciting new PlayStation console. The next generation of PlayStation is here. Yes, there's only a handful of games. More games are being pushed because of the pandemic and stuff like that, but what we have here and, and the actual hardware itself is incredibly exciting. I think we're really fortunate hardware-wise for both Xbox and PlayStation 5. They both talked up their specs and their power, and both of these consoles seem to really be talking the talk and walking the walk. Does that make sense? But that's how we're feeling on it so far. Keep your eyes peeled because we're gonna have a ton more videos before he buys of various launch games, uh, comparisons between older generation games, uh, stuff between Xbox and PlayStation stacked up against each other. So if you are new, maybe consider subscribing. We put out a video every single day. Uh, also, if you enjoyed this video and had a good time riding along with us, uh, clicking the like button does actually help us out. We're gonna answer questions if we can in the comments, but if you wanna hit me up directly and ask me something, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube at Jake Baldino. But thank you guys for coming around. Really, really appreciate it. Appreciate the feedback. Thank you for a great 2020 if you've been here. Uh, the this console generation is pretty exciting so far. So buckle up for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.